Father, your word is delight, delightful to our soul and our spirit. Your word is what we need to survive, what you need to have victory in this life, in this Christian life that you have called us into. Your word is what we need. But your word without your spirit is just human word. So I let this word, let this word this morning, Holy Spirit, take this word and plant it in our heart. In the name of Jesus, let this word be source of strength, restoration, bring joy, bring hope, bring life. In the name of Jesus, through a word released, Ezekiel spoke to the dead bones, and they came back to life. Let this word bring dead bones to life again this morning. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke any distraction, we rebuke any heaviness, we rebuke any spirit of darkness. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of our meditation this morning is Be Strong and Courageous. Be Strong and Courageous. I want to talk to you really about the Christian life, your Christian walk. When you read the text that we're going to read, you may not think of your Christian walk first. But this is really an application that we can make of it. In Joshua chapter 1, I want to read from verses 1 through 9. Joshua is the first book right after the five books of the Pentateuch. After the five books of Moses we find Joshua. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, into the land that I'm giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread open, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Etites, to the great sea toward the going down of his son shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Verse 6. Be strong and courageous, for you shall call these people to inherit the land that I saw to the fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right, to, to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Amen. We want to talk to you first about 
the fact that God is making a reality check. And he's calling Joshua to action. Amen. Then we want to talk to you about the promise that he has made to Moses that he is renewing. And finally, the fact that Joshua had to be strong and courageous. Moses was the servant of God. And that's what the word of God says. And he lived his life as God has called him. He sacrificed what needed to be sacrificed. For 40 years, you remember, it was in the wilderness. Obeying the word of God. Being trained by God. And God used them indeed to liberate his people from Egypt. And so he had a, a, a purpose to accomplish. But unfortunately, because of his disobedience, well, let me, let me, let me change it. Because of one act of disobedience, it, it did not really end up accomplishing, accomplishing what God called him to do. But while he was serving God, there was a young man with him. That young man's name is Joshua. While Moses was being obedient to God, serving God, leading the people of God, going through all the frustration, there was a young man with him that was watching him. Joshua was born in Egypt. So Joshua saw the people suffering. Joshua saw the hand of God indeed against Pharaoh. Joshua was one of those who walked through the Red Sea, you see. I would give anything, really, to be part of those people. I would, I would give anything, really, to be part of those who really, literally walked through the Red Sea. Joshua lived all those things. When God called Moses to go to the mountain, Mount Sinai, I believe, to give him the Ten Commandments, he told Moses, tell everybody to stay away. But do you know that Moses went with Joshua? Except that Joshua did not make it to the top of the mountain. But he waited there for Moses. When God revealed himself through a pillar of cloud, and he went to the tabernacle, he went to the tent that Moses has constructed, and he spoke to Moses face to face in that tent. Joshua was at the door. Hallelujah. Witnessing what God was doing. Even, even after Moses left the tent, Joshua still was waiting there. I, I'm just going back to tell you how hungry he was for the presence of God. How consecrated this man was. How humble this man was. How full of love of God this man was. But now something happens. His mentor dies. His mentor is Moses. Something changed. I wasn't there. But I bet you if I am Joshua, right now I start thinking. If there's only one person who is qualified to step in. If there's only one person who is qualified really to take over, it has to be Joshua. He's the one who was at the mountain, at the bottom of the mountain. He's the one that was waiting in the front of the tent. <clears throat> He's the one who witnessed all these things with Moses. He's the one that Moses even sent on special missions. So if I am Joshua, I am sitting there thinking right now. My mentor is dead. The one that receives the word from God is dead. What will happen now to us? What will happen now to my life? You see, Egypt represents the world. Cana represents not heaven. Some will tell you Cana represents heaven, but it does not represent heaven. You know why? Because there will be no giant in heaven. There'll be no fighting in heaven. 
There were giants in Kana. There were a whole lot of fighting in Kana. I see Kana as the Christian life. It's the Christian walk. It is a walk of victory. It's a victory promised by God. And yet it's full of giants. That you and I must rise up, be strong, and courageous. Because we are fighting through the victory that is already won on our behalf. God calls Joshua a call to action. The reality check is in verse 2. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Joshua, a page has been turned. A door has been closed. Joshua, your life is just about to take a different turn. Your life is about to change completely. I want you to understand, Joshua, that Moses is dead. It's now you and me. I want you to keep your eyes now on me. Whatever was causing fear in your life, whatever was bringing you indeed to be down, I want you to know that you now have a new partner. It's not Moses anymore, but me, God, I'm now your mentor. I am the one who will be leading indeed the charge. My servant is dead, but I am not dead. I want to talk to tell someone this morning that people may have been dying around you. Doors may have been closed around you. But God is saying he is not dead. He is still alive. That your Christian life is not over just because the door has been closed. Just because an opportunity has been removed. But the Lord God who is the one who opens the doors. He is still indeed uh, 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 on ch- in charge. He is calling Joshua to action. Because he says, arise. Get up. St- uh, dry your tears, so to speak. Life has to, be, has to move on. There is a whole lot of people that are waiting. I'm counting on you to take them to the promised land. I'm relying on you. Do you know that when God is about to do something new, he always uses one person. He's going to use a man. He's going to use a woman. He's going to use a child. No matter what he is, but God will use one person. I pray, my friend, that if something is going to change in your family, if something is going to change in this church, I said it before, let it be you. You can be the Joshua of this generation. You can be the Joshua of your family. You can be the one that will bring back life in your family. You can be the one that will bring back life in this church. You can be a Joshua, that's what I'm saying. But you can't sit down with your hands crossed. He says, arise. It's a call to action. Hallelujah. Arise. He says, go over this Jordan. The Jordan is a, a, it's like a handicap. It's like an obstacle. It's a big river. It's between where they are and where they need to go. But they have to cross the Jordan. God has described exactly the mission. He did not hide anything. He said, this Jordan that you see, you must go over that. Because the blessing I'm giving you is on the other side of the obstacle. The blessing that you're waiting, sometimes is on the other side of the mountain. Sometimes it's on the other side of the valley. But as long as you stay on this side, you stay on the east. You're staying on the east, but you must cross to go to the west side of the Jordan. As long as we're waiting... The Jordan is not going to move. As actually, as I speak to you this morning, the Jordan is still there. So there are things that will not move. But my faith must move. My faith must bring me to go over those things. The Jordan will not move. The mountain will not be removed. But God will indeed move in my life. He says, uh, Joshua, arise and go over this Jordan. I'm talking to somebody this morning, and God is telling you this morning, arise and go over this Jordan. 
no matter what name you call it, no matter what description you make of it, he says, you will go over this Jordan because you are not alone. So be strong and courageous. You have now embarked on a new journey. You no longer in Egypt. You have made your way to the promised land. You are on your way indeed to prosperity. You are on your way to, to, to delight in this life that God has given you. You have a new partner. He is the one who suffered on the cross. He is the one who has gone through all kinds of temptation. You have a new partner. His name is Jesus Christ. He has gone through everything that you're going through right now. And more than what you are going through right now. His name is Emmanuel. His name is Emmanuel. God with me and God with you. You have a new partner. You just have to be strong and be courageous. Hallelujah. That's our reality check. It's a call to action. When you see, when God opens up your eyes and it brings you to uh, uh, kind of really see what is it that you're going through, it calls you to action. And it makes a promise. My second point is the promise to Moses is renewed. We sang earlier the covenant keeping God, the one who has made the promise to Moses. The promise is very clear. And he said himself that every place, someone say every place. So there is nothing forbidden in your Christian life. There is no area of your Christian life that must suffer defeat. Uh-uh. There is no, I prosper financially, but spiritually I'm not prospering. But emotionally I'm, I'm not prospering. God says every place that your, the sole of your foot will tread open, I have given you. I mean, whoever was standing there before must go. Must go. I mean, whatever was holding you down before you gave your life to Jesus, whatever is holding you down, whatever is binding you before your Christian life, now, my friend, that place must be emptied. Whoever that giant is, it must go. Because the word says every place, he says, I have given you. Even though God says, I have given you, it means I have already made the promise. I've already opened the door. And yet, they're still on the other side of the Jordan. They have not made it yet. But God said, I have given to you. So the, the victory that the Lord has released already, the victory that Jesus has won on your behalf on the cross, this is not just a word. Uh-uh. You have to believe that he has won the victory on your behalf. And you have to possess that victory. Don't live in defeat. Don't live in the past. But believe that he has won the victory. I don't know what you believe, my friend, but I believe that he said it is finished. He said it is finished. And so I believe that he won my victory, even though the giants are there, but they shall move. They shall go. That's why he says, be strong and courageous just because he won the victory. Just because he made the promise doesn't mean I have to cross my, thing, my arm and not pray anymore and not fast anymore and not do anything else anymore. It doesn't mean I just leave and do whatever I want to do. No, I have to believe that I am not alone fighting. But I have a spirit of God in me. I have a name of Jesus in, with me. I have the blood of Jesus indeed speaking on my behalf. And I will indeed move in victory in the name of Jesus. The promise is very clear. It, God himself told Joshua, no man. Someone say no man. Hallelujah. No man shall be able to stand before you. Some read this and they say, well, God made a mistake. Some men will be able to stand before me. 
As long as you believe that some men will stand before you, they will stand before you. As long as you believe that men will stand before you, they will stand before you. But the word says no man shall be able to stand before you. Not only when you are in Texas, but even when you travel to Africa, when you travel to the Ivory Coast, when you travel to Zambia, when you travel to Libreville, when you travel to Kin, no matter where you go, all the way to Russia, he says all the days of your life, no man shall be able to stand before you. My friend, someone, it's time for you to rise up and know that you are indeed are a conqueror. It's time for you to take your faith indeed and rise up in faith and live this Christian life as a conqueror. Oh, I'm just, I'm just talking to myself. I just came to encourage myself this morning. Just as I was with Moses. Listen, church. He says, just as I was with Moses. I went back to tell you how he was with Moses. Joshua was there. God is not saying, Joshua, just think. Uh -uh. He's saying, Joshua, remember. <laughs> remember what I have done. I remember that I am the one who opened the Red Sea. Remember that I am the one who indeed brought really all of this uh, doom upon the life of Pharaoh. <clears throat> remember what I am able to do. And I want to tell somebody, remember who this God is. Remember that he's not a man that he shall lie. Remember really that when God says he's going to do something, he will do it. Remember that there is no power that is stronger than God. Remember that there is no one that is as faithful as this God. Remember. Why is God telling Joshua to remember? Because the fight is going to be strong. Because the giants are there. God knows what is awaiting them. Listen, God knows that Jericho was right in around the corner. God knows that the Philistine will be around. And the Hittite and the Jebusite and all those ites, ites, ites will be there. God knows who is waiting, uh, awaiting Joshua. He said, Joshua, remember. I want to tell somebody, remember what the Lord has done on your behalf. Remember what God has done on your behalf. If there is nothing to remember, it means God has not started working yet in your life. If there is nothing to remember, I say just wait a second. Because for you to see the glory of God, there are a few issues that you have to go through. There are just a few things that you have to go through. God will teach you one or two things, my friend. And then when you remember, he will use you. This is not about Joshua. It's about the people of God. The people that God has called. The people that God had made a promise to. He said, I have made a promise to Moses. So I will be with you. Listen to this. I will not leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. Someday when I get up, I don't feel like praying. I am tired in my body. I am heavy in my spirit. I just sit there. In the morning, I don't want to talk too much. But my spirit is in connection with the Lord. And I say, God, I know you will not leave me. I know you will not forsake me. God, this morning, I don't feel like speaking in tongues. I don't even feel like opening my mouth. But I know that you shall be with me. God, I'm leaving this house, but I'm counting on you to bring me back. I don't know what is awaiting me. I don't know whatever will happen, but I know that I am not alone. God, I need you. God, I need you. He says, I will not need, leave you, nor forsake you. That is the promise that he made to Moses. And he made, he renewed that promise to Joshua. Amen. You know, I am blessed to know that God speaks on my behalf as well today. And on your behalf, he speaks again today. And he says, nothing will stand before you. It does not mean what it, whatever it is. He said, no man. But we have to be strong. 
and courageous. Someone said, Pastor, if God is with me, and he has already won all of his battles, you're saying, and Jesus says everything is accomplished, why can I just enjoy this Christian life? Why, why can I just cruise through it? You know, why can I just do, like, going on a cruise? You, you know, when you go on a cruise, hallelujah, you just enjoy. You don't work. There are people working on your behalf. They're serving you. I mean, I only watched it on TV, though. I did, I've never been to one yet, but I watched it on TV. You know, they serve you. You get up. They, people clean your feet. They, I mean, they, they, you, you just pimped. Well, it's not quite like that. You, you don't need to be strong and courageous on a cruise. You sleep a lot. You rest a lot. You enjoy the breeze, the wind. You just enjoy all those things. Uh, it, it's not quite like that, the Christian life. I wish there was no giant to deal with. I, I wish there was no giant to deal with. I wish there was no issue to deal with. But this morning, I just came to encourage one person that you would change your mindset. And you will know that the minute you begin to embrace that you are not alone in this fight, you've already won the victory. The minute you change your mindset and you begin to walk in the strength of the Lord, you begin to be courageous in the strength of the Lord, you, you will already won the victory. God is not counting on Joshua. He's not counting on the strength of Joshua. He's not counting on my strength to live this Christian life. No. He goes and he says in verse 6, Be strong and courageous, for you shall call these people to inherit the land. I mean, you are the person that I have chosen to bring these people to the promised land. You are the one that will do this. No one else will do it. God is promising victory first. He said you, you will own this land. Everything that you see there, you will see no longer. Just like I have done with Moses and Pharaoh, the same God will tell Moses to tell the people in Exodus. He said those people that you see right now, you will not see them anymore. Though he said be still, just wait. Be silent. For the Egyptians that are coming after you, you will not see them anymore. There is a time for everything under heaven, the word of God says. There is a time for the Egyptian to rise up. There is a time for the Egyptian to be running after you. But there is a time for God also to rise up and to say enough is enough. There's a time for God to lift up his mighty right hand and to say enough is enough. This is a time for you to enter into the rest. Hallelujah. You shall inherit the land that I have sown to the fathers to give them. Hallelujah. That's a promise to, for victory. And yes, it's a promise for victory for our Christian life. It is a promise for victory, my friend, for this Christian life. Don't listen to the devil. Don't listen indeed to the plan of the enemy. Hallelujah. Verse 7, he said, only be strong and very courageous. Being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it. He says it. Joshua, be careful. Because this is not a game. There are real giants awaiting you. And so it's almost like someone who 
as, uh, knows exactly what's going to happen. It's like a parent, a mother, or a father who has lived this life for a while, who knows exactly what this life is like. You know, who knows the dangers of this life. It's like an uncle or maybe a big brother who have gone through a few experiences in this life, who pull his son or his prodigy, he pull them on the side, he sit them down, and he begin to talk to them. And begin to tell them, be careful. Because this life really is not all that you think it is. Be careful who you hang out with. Be careful who you talk to. Be careful who you invite in your life. It's like this big brother would say, be careful to do everything that I'm going to instruct you to do. Be careful that... When I say to stop, be careful to stop. God is telling Joshua, knowing exactly what is awaiting them. He says, everything that I'm going to tell you, everything that I have already given to Moses, don't turn from it, not from the right, not from the left, he says. But he says, do everything then you're going to have good success wherever you go. Wherever you go. So my friend, I'm here to tell you again this morning that the victory has been won on our behalf. But God has given specific instruction to see that victory come now to fruition in our lives. How is it that we have a bunch of Christians who live a defeated life? Yes, they'll go to heaven. Yes, they will go to the spend eternity with God. But while we are on this earth and living this Christian life, God has given us victory. And he says to be careful to do what he has said to do. He said to be obedient to his word. He said not to turn any way from left or from the right, but to walk according to what he has prescribed for us to do. That's a promise, my friend, of success. A promise of prosperity. If you are strong and courageous, that promise will come to pass. It's only a promise. Joshua had to walk according to the word of God. Had to walk according to the, 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 uh, the promises of God. He had to walk according to the oracles of God in order to have a victory. It is no different from me. It is no different from you. If we don't walk according to the word of God, if we don't do things according to the promises of God, there will be no victory. There is success, but there is good success. He said you will have good success. No matter where you go, no matter what giant you face, no matter who rises against you, know that I have already spoken and I will stand by my word. I will do what no man can do. I will open the door that no man can open. You shall see that I am the maker of heaven and earth, Joshua. You will know that I never sleep. I have never slumber. You will know that I am the keeper of Israel. You will know that I have made a special promise to Israel. And I intend to keep this promise. Be strong. Be courageous. Don't let the circumstances of this life bring you down. Don't let anything at all, no matter what you can call it, don't let it bring you down. But this morning, I want you to know that God is still on the throne, that he's able to lift you up. He's able to grab you and remove you from the teeth of the bear. He's able to fight all battle that you may be facing. But he needs you to be strong. And to be courageous, he needs you to know that he's still on your side. Joshua is one of those that when Moses sent them indeed to go, and to, he sent them to explore the land. <laughs> to explore the land. He called 12 people, one per tribe. 
12 tribes of Israel. He called one person per tribe. And then he called Joshua. And Caleb were part of him. And he sent them on this exploration trip. When they came back in the book of Numbers, only two of them brought a report. Joshua and Caleb. The same Joshua that I'm talking to you about. God is not a God of, 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 of coincidence. God knows what he's doing in our lives. Joshua went and he saw those giants. And he came back and he gave a report to Moses. And he said, the land is full of giants, but the land is good. It's a land where flow honey and milk, and we shall definitely have possession of that land. It is the same Joshua I'm talking to you about today. God is telling him, you have seen them. Your eyes have seen those giants, but be strong, be courageous. Don't be brought down by fear. Don't let the circumstances bring you down. So that I think that God will allow you to see. There are situations that I may not see, but God will allow you to see. Because he wants to do great things in your life. He's telling you this morning, be strong. Be courageous. That those giants that you see, I am stronger than they are. I am more powerful than they are. I'm able to unroot them. I'm able to remove them. I'm able to set you on the path of victory. It's a promise of success. It's a promise of good success. It's a promise of prosperity. He says, this book shall not depart from your mouth. You must meditate upon it every day and every night. He says, then your ways will be made prosperous. And he repeats to Joshua, then you will have good success. There is a promise of victory for each one of us. A promise of victory for you and for me. A promise of success for you and for me. A promise of prosperity for you and for me. And I, for one, choose to believe in that promise. Hallelujah. God made the promise and God will stand by his son. And it will indeed abide by his promise. The last promise is a promise of his presence and protection. Verse 9. He said, be strong and courageous. Do not frighten. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Listen. If, if you, you read just as we read, how many times he told Joshua, be strong and courageous. Is God really saying to Joshua, are you dumb? I know you're so stupid, you don't understand that I said the first time I thought you're not going to understand. No. The reason why God tells Joshua three times is because he knows what is awaiting him. He knows that indeed there are giants really in the land. He knows that they'll be fighting ahead of them. And so he comes back. God is building up Joshua's faith. But Joshua has already seen a whole lot in, the, in his life. I mean, I told you, he walked through the Red Sea. He's seen what God is able to do. And yet God continued to tell him. I'm just telling you to tell somebody in this place that your faith sometimes will fail. You may have seen God even risen people from the dead. You may have seen God so many miracles indeed years ago. But today your faith may fail. Today your faith may be shaky. But God is telling you this morning, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Again, be strong and courageous. He says the giants are there. But I will not let you by yourself. I will not abandon you. I will not forsake you. I will be with you. I will fight your battles. I will stand with you. I will stand with you. Hallelujah. He has done his part. He chose his men. He built up his faith. Joshua now had to obey. 
Joshua <laughs> had to take the word for what it is. He had to take it for the word of God. And he had to walk according to it. I want to tell somebody this morning, the word has been released. The same God who spoke is the same God who is speaking to you this morning. The word has been released. Now the ball was in, in, in Joshua's court. Joshua had to rise, rise and go. And as you read in verse 10, he said, And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, pass through the midst of a camp, and command the people, God, I mean Joshua, has already started the work. There is no transition between verse 9 and verse 10. As soon as God was done talking to him, he began the work. He began gathering the people. He began telling the people around him, have you not heard that Yahweh has spoken? Have you not heard that God just spoke? Have you not heard that God is fighting our battles? He called the leaders. He said, begin to gather the people because we must get busy. We must get busy because God is with us. Nothing will stand against us. Nothing will bring us down. God has already won the victory. And he began to walk. And as they make the step ahead, as they move forward, they see the work of God moving forward. Let me say it again. As they rise up from where they're sitting comfortably, as they begin to take the step of faith, they begin to see the Jordan open. They begin to see the giant going down. But as long as they wait, as long as, my friend, you will wait, as long as you will come and go, as long as you wait and wait, you will wait and wait, I told you the Jordan it will, not, it will, not, it will not go anywhere. But you take one step, God open one door. You take another step, God open another door. As you take the more steps you take, the more doors God is giving, opening. The more testimonies we're going to hear in this church. The more steps we're taking, the more power of God we will see. The more we trust God, the more we will testify. The more we will testify. I'm saying, my friend, Cornerstone, the more step we take, the more we will glorify God. I'm not hearing testimonies because we are not taking steps of faith. I don't know. I don't have, I've never seen a church where we don't testify. I, don't see a, I have never seen a church where we sit on what God is doing. Either God is with us or is not with us. But if God is with us and is working, we must hear what God is doing. If we don't hear anything, it means we are sitting. It means we are not moving. Our faith is not being tried. But God is about to do something. He says, Cornerstone, be strong and courageous. Then you will testify. Then you will help me. You will help your brother. You will help your sister. He says, Cornerstone, then you will know that the one who has called you is the same that is speaking to Joshua right here. He says, be strong, be courageous, but you must arise and do what? Go. You must arise and go. I don't know what you will face this week. I'm done. I don't know what you'll be facing this week. I don't know what challenge you will be facing. I don't know what challenge you'll be facing. I don't know. But it doesn't matter what I know, what I don't know. God knows. And so if God is releasing a word to strengthen just your faith this morning, He's saying, giants are part of this Christian life. Giants are part of our battles. I hear sometimes, Pastor, I'm tired. That, that's, that's human. That's okay. Pastor, I am tired. I, I am tired. I hear. Papa, I should fatigue. 
I am tired. That, that's human. It's okay. Sometimes I too say, <laughs> I am tired. Uh-huh. There's no superman. No, there's no superman. There's no church on, on this earth that is full of supermen. No. But we trust in the Lord. We trust in the Lord. So no matter what you face this week, I want you to arise and to trust in the Lord. I just want you to do just one thing, to trust in the Lord. Faith moves. Faith moves. Faith moves. You will not understand everything. You will not see everything. Matter of fact, you will not understand. God will not allow you to understand. He already allowed you to see a little bit of weak and what he can do in a way it is. But for you to see the glory of God is going for you, it's going to take for you to be strong and courageous. The giant will not swallow you. The fire will not burn you. The waters will not submerge you. You will have a victory. Because Joshua had the victory. As long as he followed the instructions of God, some of the instructions make no sense. One of the instructions, God told Joshua, just walk around this building, I mean this, this fortress, six days. On the seventh day, just walk around it. Don't forget, Joshua chapter 6 came way after Joshua chapter 1. God prepared the faith of Joshua. What really happened in Joshua's spirit when they were facing Jericho? It didn't happen that day. It already happened in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua just stayed in that faith. Joshua remained in that faith. Joshua had those words inscribed in his spirit. He said, I remember God telling me to do everything that he's going to tell me to do. So when God taught him, just walk around the building six days, he gathered the people and they began to walk around the building. He said, let us just be a little bit stupid for God today. Let us be just like people who have no sense indeed today. We're just walking around this fortress. We have no hammer. We have no weapon. We have nothing. Let us be just a little bit stupid for Jesus. Let us just rise up and do things that don't make sense to anybody. But because God has spoken, let us just do it. Part of the instructions that God gave Joshua was to call the priest, to call them, and to tell them, go by the Jordan. Look at the Jordan. I know you can swim, but I'm not expecting all these people to swim. I, this is what I want you to do. I want you to be a little bit stupid for me again this morning. I want you to just put your feet in the Jordan. I just want you to put your feet in the Jordan. And the minute the, sac the, the priest put, put their feet in the Jordan, the Jordan dried out. For the second time, Joshua watched witness again for the second time. Not only he walked through the Red Sea, but he also walked through the Jordan. And he tasted indeed the milk and the honey of a good land. You will taste the honey and the milk of a good land. Of this Christian life. Because through the power of the blood, through the power of the blood, through the sacrifice on the cross, the Jordan has been already way open. You now have access to the Holy of Holies. You have access to the presence of God. You have access to the protection of God. 
You have access, my friend, to the favor of God. You have access to the love of God. You have access to the presence of God. It says, be strong and courageous. Have I not commended you? He didn't say, have I not taught you? He said, have I not commended you to be strong and courageous? It means that you, you cannot fail. Uh-uh, you cannot fail. And I want to tell somebody this morning in this place, you must believe that you cannot fail in this Christian life. You must believe that you cannot fail, that the devil will not have victory over your life. I want you to believe that God indeed is still on the power, I mean on the throne, and his power shall continue to be your portion. Why don't you rise with me? In the name of Jesus.